That is, uh, no, more, no more action should be taken in respect of Mr. Porchak's motion. Under Rule 48B, bracket 2A, uh, uh, upon the moving of motion under sub Rule 1A, debate shall be adjourned and the matter stated in the motion shall be referred to an investigation committee. Unless the Council, on a motion which may be moved without notice by any Council, otherwise orders. If the motion moved by Mr. Chen Chi Chin is agreed to, no further action shall be taken on the motion of censure moved under sub rule 1A. As Mr. Chen Chi Chin has a move a motion uh, not to, to take further action for the motion already moved, I have to deal with Mr. Chen Chi Chen's uh, uh, motion first. And I have to remind members that this motion is moved in accordance with Article 79, bracket 7. If uh, the motion is carried, uh, the um, member concerned will be disqualified. According to our rules of procedure, after uh, a, move, a motion under sub-rule 1A uh, is moved, the debate shall be adjourned. And then there will be an investigation into the misbehaviour alleged. Under the rules of procedure, members can move a motion without notice to take no further action in respect of the censure motion. That the purpose is to uh, allow the council to seriously consider whether there should be an investigation into the alleged misbehaviour. As we are now debating on the censure motion, but rather the motion not to take further action in respect of the censure motion. I have to remind members that uh, the, when you discuss this motion, you should not uh, talk about the uh, alleged misbehaviour in the censure motion in question, but rather you, whether you support or not in support the uh, mo the uh, the referral of the matter to an investigation committee. So, Mr. Chen Chi Chin, you may now speak on your motion. First of all, I have to tell the public, the media, and everyone, every member here, this. I have to make this clear again, because not many people know about the uh, procedure. We are now. Uh, Doing. Ms. Dr. Jiang Chung Tai was the one affected by the central motion, and yesterday he, he asked us again to vote against Mr. Paul Chair's uh, motion. Uh, whatever happens, we are not going to vote on uh, Mr. Paul Chair's motion today, as explained so clearly by the President. If there's no member move a motion, under 49 bracket uh, 2A, uh, we'll be setting up a investigation committee. The investigation will follow and then a report will be reported and then we will be uh, considering whether we should support or, or not support Mr. Porcher's motion and a vote will be taken. So today, members should support my motion and that is That no further action should be taken on the censure motion. If my motion is passed, then uh, we can uh, return to the right track, and not it's as if nothing has happened. We would have our council meeting as suppose as we suppose, and we can talk about livelihood issues. Dr. Chiang Chong Tai issued a letter to all members last week. I would like to quote some of the contents. The D of J has uh, launched uh, JR applications in respect of the uh, qualification of a uh, number of members. And Mr. Paul Chair has tried to uh, tie in with the D of J's effort and try to uh, show his loyal to the mainland authorities. This will create a very bad precedent. If this is uh, done, uh, all of you will become victims of uh, political uh, struggle and uh, the uh, electoral rights of uh, voters will be deprived. I agree with the, all the six points in uh, Dr. Chiang Chong Tai's uh, letter. 
Otherwise, I wouldn't have moved this uh, motion that no further action should be taken on Mr. Ch Chair's motion. I think uh, Mr. Paul Chair is trying to uh, blow things up, and he's uh, trying to generalize uh, things uh, to uh, to the level of principles. I think this is a bogus claim. It's 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 only the, an exaggeration of Dr. Chiang's uh, behavior, and then he's trying to trum up some the f false justifications, so that the motion under Article seventy nine bracket seven can be passed, and uh, the uh, and then Dr. Chiang Chong Tai will be uh, disqualified, leading to further division of our people and our community. The pro establishment camp and other people in the community would like to have said that we want to return to the uh, to the to the usual business by the by uh, promoting harmony. Uh, the motion of censure is about the behavior of Dr. Cheng Chong Tai on the 19th of October when the Dr. En Jiang and other members tried to create. Uh, try to abort the meeting. Dr. Jiang uh, did something to the flags on this uh, bench, on the two small flags planted uh, in in clubs in club holders. He inverted the flags. And it said that uh, he, Dr. Jiang, was uh, deliberately uh, insulting or desecrating uh, the national threat and the regional threat, and that's why he would like to move a motion of censure in an attempt to uh, disqualify a member who was returned by f more than fifty thousand voters. If we objectively assess what has what happened, you know why I'm saying that. Uh, uh, Doctor, Mr. Paul Chair is uh, trying to fabricate some false and unfounded accusations. During the House Committee, we discussed uh, the matters such as the sizes of the flags are, are not uh, up to the standards, and whether we could regard the behavior as desecration. Of course. Uh, uh, Mr. Porter has referred to the section eight of the uh, ordinance, and that is uh, if uh, the copy of a thread is so closely res res resemble the uh, real one as to lead to people to believe that it is the thread, it will be taken as the thread. I will be responding to these points uh, when we proceed to the uh, debate on Mr. Chair's motion. I have to tell you that uh, on that day, the pro-establishment camp uh, left the council on Mars in order to abort the meeting, and uh, they won't be returning for the meeting on that day. And uh, th I would say that the threats uh, were abandoned. The so-called exhibits, or, or in the in the in the, as called by the Mr. Chair, or a mock-up. As I would call them uh, protest uh, articles, uh, like uh, some other members did in the past on this uh, bench or on the this hedge, and uh, the president always said that you should uh, put the uh, mock-up or protest articles or the display article. On the hedge when you sp speak, actually the uh, members concerned already abandoned the facts. So, whatever Doctor Chang did to these abandoned facts uh, would be uh, meaningless. Well, it depends on how you uh, interpret what he did. Whether it's uh, putting the flags uh, upside down or, 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 
or else. According to the uh, ordinance, uh, no one should desecrate the re uh, threats by publicly and willfully burning, mutilating, scoring on, and so on, on the threat. As I've said, uh, we're not go here in uh, debating about the effect of or the most content of the uh, motion of censure. We are now having a debate on whether we should uh, refer the matter to an investigation committee. You should return to this subject and should not be talking about the uh, motion of uh, Mr. Chess. Well, I, uh, thank you for your reminder, President. I have been trying to be as uh, succinct as possible, but I have to convince members to support my motion, and that is a uh, we should not take further action on the motion moved by Paul Chair to censure Dr. Chen Chong Tai. And that is my mo in my motion is carried. The so called investigation committee should not be set up. Uh, th so I must tell them that this is a trivial matter and uh, he's uh, blowing things up and he's trying to trump up accusations. He's trying to. The, make up stories. So I would like to convince members so that we don't need to spend so much time to deal with uh, what is going to follow this motion. I know DAB has uh, reported the matter to the police. At the House Committee, we said that uh, we should let the police uh, investigate the matter. Uh, has the police uh, arrested Dr. Chang or prosecuted Dr. Chang? As far as I know, no. And, uh, has uh, Dr. Chang been invited to uh, assist in the investigation? And I don't think so. Maybe the police don't think that uh, there, is a suf there are sufficient grounds to take such action. Of course, uh, as uh, Mr. Porcher has said, a member of this council can invoke uh, Rule 49B, bracket 1, capital A, and move a, a, a motion. Of course, a uh, member can do that. And in the past, the poor establishment camp members have uh, criticized uh, us for the filibustering. And we would say that uh, that's allowed under the rules of procedure. And they would counter that uh, it's an abuse of the rules of procedure. And today, he's exactly doing what he criticized us for. That is the abuse of rules of procedure. When we move amendments, when we want to have a debate on the budget, there would be benefits, uh, there would be pressure brought or to onto the government, and uh, we can bring public attention to the uh, budget or the motion. But uh, this motion moved by Mr. Chair would achieve no benefit. I understand. That uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, after Mr. Chair said he would move the motion, the poor establishment members, uh, some of them, would not like to uh, give give him the support he needs, and I I wondered why it was not the DAB moving this motion, and uh, and I hope that the owners of those threats uh, can uh, hand over the same hand over the same number of threats. If you think that uh, taking down the threats uh, the, the, is against the uh, ordinance, then uh, no national threat can be uh, disposed of uh, in the rubbish bin. And you should allow them to uh, disintegrate naturally. Because if you it's put in an incinerator, it's uh, burning the threat. And uh, after we, we, we go away from a meeting, and if the, any secretarial staff collects the threats, put it in a bag, it's also against the uh, national flag and national emblem ordinance. Or if uh, they are disposed of, it's against the ordinance. And if you produce the so called national threats, or you, you, you distribute national threats, they should uh, come to the committee as uh, witnesses. Uh, if I continue, uh, uh, the president will say that I'm going too deep into the uh, substantive uh, case behind the motion. I believe the most you can say 
is that uh, Dr. Chang wanted to insult the members who put up those uh, displays. Of course, I cannot answer questions uh, on his behalf. But I would like to bring up one fact here. Of course, uh, people see Dr. Chiang Chong Tai differently. During the election electioneering process, he signed the uh, that, uh, confirmation uh, notice quickly, and he signed the form. And he also wanted the, the uh, basic law to be continued forever. That shows uh, his loyalty. Has uh, Mr. Porche said in his uh, election platform that he will support the basic law forever? So we have one member who wants to have the basic law forever and ever, and you say he is not loyal to the PRC, uh, and also he doesn't bear allegiance. That's absurd. Of course, when taking our oaths, different members uh, do different things, did different things, according to some netizens. Dr. Chiang uh, failed to add anything in the uh, oath. You can say that uh, he is uh, he was conservative, or he want to be uh, on the safe side. But all that shows that he uh, was uh, faithful to the uh, oath, and he bears allegiance to the Hong Kong S A R. Unlike uh, Mr. Wong Ting Kong, who omitted the words Hong Kong, and Mr. Paul Chang uh, questioned the motive behind the. Uh, Turning the press upside down, and that is that was meant to be an insult. That's uh, your imagination. Doctor Chiang Chong Tai uh, has been loyal to the Hong Kong S A R of the P L C all the time, and if you want to uh, compete uh, with uh, Doctor Chiang, the two members, uh, uh, Mister Chair and Miss Doctor Chiang, should. Uh, have a competition among themselves. If this motion is passed, then we will not be spending the valuable time on the motion of censure, and we will be spending time on livelihood, livelihood issues. We will not be creating more the arguments. Uh, we will not be the, talking about the abstract principles uh, and disregard facts. And if, and that would. If you support uh, Dr. Ch uh, Mr. Chair's uh, motion, you will be uh, going against your principles. Uh, I urge members to support my motion. No further action should be taken. And I'll put a question to you, and that is um, that the motion moved by Mr. Chen Chi Chin be passed. How about you? Dr. Enjang, Mr. President, I speak in opposition to Mr. Ray Chen's motion in relation to Mr. Poche's censure motion concerning Dr. Jiang Chong Tai. Mr. Ray Chen would like that we take no further action on the censure motion. Well, we know that Dr. Jiang isn't a three-year-old boy. He isn't 13 years old. He isn't 23 years old. And he's 33 years old, in fact. Moreover, he's a university lecturer. He teaches. On this occasion, in broad daylight, he has committed something very naive, childish, disrespecting Hong Kong, disrespecting the nation, disrespecting the colleagues. He just cannot shake the blame. On that day, Dr. Jiang, he took the opportunity of the absence of the pro-establishment camp members. He, without authority, inverted the regional flags as well as the national flags. We found out this on the television screen. We rushed back to stop him and we warned him. We made it clear to him that such acts were wrong. However, when I left the chamber, to our surprise, Dr. Cheng once again, once again, Re inverted the uh, national flags and regional flags that I have 
already rearranged. So you can see that this is not misunderstanding. It is not a matter of being uh, naughty or mischievous. Uh, in fact, he his was a deliberate act, and it's blatant. And he was trying to um, insult uh, the national flag as well as the regional flag of the uh, People's Republic of China and the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, respectively. I stopped him, and the president also warned him many times. But it seems that he had not listened uh, to us, and he turned a deaf ear to us. He didn't pay attention to our uh, advice until the president threatened to evict him. Then he returned to his seat, but he refused to leave the chamber. I know that there are members who are present, are uh, the allies of Dr. Zheng Chongtai. Of course, they don't want their crony to become the subject matter of investigation or be censured. However, for what Zheng Chongtai has said, uh, had done, it has been broadcast live on the television screen, and it had caused an uproar among the citizens of Hong Kong. So, on this occasion, if we don't uh, enforce our rules or procedures ourselves, then people will have the impression that we are covering each other. We are letting our colleagues to do whatever they like. And in this way, the already tarnished image of the Legislative Council will be dealt a further blow. And for the young generation who would like to take Legislative members as the examples to follow, um, have no one to uh, turn to. It has been said that and in fact, it has been pointed out by Ray Chen that Zheng Chongtai has been elected by tens of thousands of voters. Does it mean that whenever a lawmaker does something wrong, you will just say that since he is an elected member, he can do whatever he likes? Does it mean that whatever he does, uh, he does so with the mandate of the people? I believe that for those uh, voters, and many of them who voted for Zhang Chongtai would not have known that Zhang Chongtai would do something so frivolous, something so childish. Ray Chen had just said that for us to set up an investigation committee, he would be wrong and we shouldn't be starting such a precedent. What's more, he was implying that this was merely a political move. For him to say so, does it mean that Ray Chen would say that for anyone who has been elected as a lawmaker could turn a blind eye to the rules of procedures and can turn a blind eye to all laws and regulations? My answer to this is no. I think even a primary student can tell you that even uh, for the king or the emperor to break the law, he will be subject to the same censure of the law. If we believe in democracy, then you will clearly know that in a democratic country, even the national leaders uh, can be reprimanded and have to step down from office. Now, if we talk about democracy, we should also uphold the rule of law. Otherwise, there won't be any checks and balances. Therefore, I sincerely appeal to members to do the following. We need to take into account the overall interests of our society. We should be impartial. Just like in the year 2009, Mr. Kamlai Wai from the Democratic Party, there was a scandal about him and his uh, uh, female uh, assistant. There was a, uh, a idea to set up an investigation committee. His party colleagues didn't want to look into the case of Gamlai White, but at the end of the day, they just abstained from voting, though they would very much like to protect Gamlai White. Some citizens have talked to me for the Zhang Chongtai incident. They told me that Perhaps people will, th will think that it is just a minor issue, as Ray Chen has said. He said that we aren't talking about anything serious. We are merely talking about some small flags. 
but then others are also saying that the national flags represent the Chinese, and it carries the symbol of our long history and our long civilization. So, if you allow the national flag and the regional flag to be inverted, then citizens would also present um, a plaque uh, carrying the names of the ancestors of Jiang Chongtai, and they are prepared to invert it. I don't think you want to see this happening, and I don't think you will invert it yourself, Jiang Chongtai. So I think the logic is the same. Now, for this matter, you may think that and this may be shared by his allies, that it is fine. He hasn't committed anything wrong. Then there's no need to fear for the establishment of an investigation committee. If it is found out that he did it deliberately, then all the more there's justification for an investigation committee. Therefore, I'm speaking in objection to Ray Chen's motion to say that there should be no further action to be taken on the censure motion. I support Porcher's censure motion concerning Zheng Chongtai so that the matter will be referred to an investigation committee. So I speak. Thank you, Mr. Pres uh, Madam Deputy. You. Mr. Lau Kuo Fan. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I support Mr. Paul C's motion and oppose Mr. Raymond Chen's motion not to proceed with uh, this debate. All right, I'll not repeat uh, the uh, whole process and also the relevant ordinances. Well, to uh, protect themselves, the opposition camp can shift the goal post and um, mess up with black with white. He said that uh, for such things, you could call the police and ask the police to deal with the matter. But when if we called the police, they would have said that uh, Lechko could deal with our own business, with our own rules of procedure, so they can shift the goalposts wherever they like, just to their favor. In fact, I really reported the case to the police. Whether it's my calling the police or Mr. Porter's motion to censure Mr. Cheng Chong Tai, I think the two are not in conflict. We should take whatever action we can to tackle something that is wrong. We should not condone such behavior. Many members in the opposition camp would like to defend Mr. Zheng Chong Tai, uh, saying that he's just being childish, and yet uh, they accuse Mr. Porter of political persecution. In fact, Zheng Chong Tai took the initiative to come and mess up with our national flags and regional flags. He's from the civic passion, and I'm sure all he does has a political motive, and the motive is to insult the country and to insult the regional flag. We displayed the flags because We had two former colleagues, or well, perhaps uh, they were not uh, really uh, formal legislators. They uh, used the term China to insult our country. So we told them that under the basic law, the SAR is part of China. And so we displayed the national flag and our regional flag to remind them that oath-taking is a solemn matter. 
as uh, Dr. An Zhang said, and as many people say, uh, even for the emperor to break the law, he should face the same penalty, whoever he is, even though they he is uh, returned by direct elections. There's no excuse or no shield uh, from penalty after he has broken the rules. Mr. Chang might be punished by law or he might be censored here. But people who have voted for him will say that because of his childish behavior, he has uh, let down his voters. He has failed his voters. We have seen many democratic democratically returned heads of government all over the world who have to uh, face the consequences of uh, their action. So we are only exercising our uh, powers under the basic law in censoring him. There is no question of political persecution. Many members in the past uh, have used uh, various ways and means to cause disorder to this council. For instance, adding uh, phrases to their oath, uh, throwing uh, a glass at a public official, and even uh, snatching documents from public officials. Chairman uh, of uh, different meetings were usually lenient, but never did we imagine that if we take a step back, they would take a step forward. They've never appreciated our uh, consider uh, conciliatory approach, so that we can have consensus and uh, solidarity here. So we cannot step back anymore. Regrettable, we have two elected members who saw that because our previous legislators could add to his oath, they added words to their oath this time, even language insulting to the country. As a result, they have to face uh, the consequence. They have uh, they're now disqualified as a result of that. Uh, Mr. Lau, Kwok Fan, may I remind you that we're not here to uh, discuss this motion to censor Mr. Chang Chong Tai. Rather, we're discussing uh, whether we should support Mr. Raymond Chen's motion. Well, perhaps uh, if uh, we condone such behavior too much, we may be doing you harm rather than good. Some may say that this is a trivial matter, but uh, we should not do any evil, even though how minor it is. And uh, we uh, should not refrain from doing good, no matter how small it is. So. Uh, whether we should censor Mr. Zhang or not, not, let's leave it to a select committee to handle. There is no need for us to shelve this discussion. So I support Mr. Porter's motion and oppose Mr. Raymond Chen's motion. Thank you, Madam Deputy. You. Dr. Kwok Thank you, Madam Deputy. Well, actually, we shouldn't have. Uh, spend so much valuable of our council time to talk about this. We should be talking about things uh, more serious. But uh, this is uh, started by Mr. Paul Chair. Uh, he wants to uh, invoke our powers and privileges. And that is Rule 49B and also the Article 79, Bracket 7 of the basic law against uh, a prank star in his in his eye, and we have to invoke our powers to censure the another member. 
I think we have to consider proportionality of all our action. You may want to want to criticize Dr. Chiang Chong Tai's uh, action. Do it whatever you like. But we cannot ignore what actually happened on that day. On that day, the pro establishment camp uh, tried to trigger an, ab an abortive meeting. That's not something honorable. Well, the pro establishment members kept saying in the past that we should not uh, cause uh, meetings to be aborted. And then uh, what they did uh, that day uh, raised uh, many of an eyebrow, even among their uh, members. Well, it's a pity that Mr. Wong Kok Heng was not with us. Otherwise, he would have said that, well, what a waste! Uh, it would cost it would cost us uh, how many uh, uh, cans of uh, luncheon meat in in so in so doing. But anyway, what they did uh, was not. Something honorable, and very often, well, we don't have a uh, toy threats like uh, what we saw when we have a threat raising ceremony. We will not do this, and very seldom we will see uh, national threats and regional threats in this council. Well, it. Uh, Caused uh, damage to the uh, uh, solemnity of uh, this council by having those threats, but I'm not trying to say to 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 uh, to defend Dr. Chen Chong Tai. You may say that uh, he was uh, being impolite and or he did something without the uh, consent of the affected colleagues. But invoking forty nine B. Uh, like this will mean that we'll be very busy because our views are sometimes divided in this council. We have different display items uh, put in front of us. If we say all the, all these uh, would uh, tend amount to misbehavior, oh, Mr. Porcher has uh, claimed that there's no political motive. But uh, this uh, disproportionate uh, response really tells a lot. But this is, uh, I would say, uh, just a practical joke. What do you have to invoke? Uh, the uh, powers and privileges to censure another member. Well, I, I, are you not being a practical joker by doing this? Are you tell, not telling people that you have a problem with judgment? Members are free to uh, do anything under the, the rules of procedure. But if you uh, view such a massive and lethal weapon in respect of a trivial matter, then this goes to show that, uh, that you have a problem with judgment. May I remember, members, that at this stage, we should not be debating on whether to support Mr. Porter's motion of censure. First, please speak on uh, Mr. Chen Chi-Chin's motion. Well, I I want to talk about um, the uh, the starting point uh, of Mr. Chen Chi-Chin's uh, motion, and that's because Mr. Porter. Moves a, a motion of censure, so uh, there's no way I can avoid why we can we should not support uh, Mr. Chair's motion. Well, dignity is a matter is a matter of uh, consensus. Of course, uh, every country uh, values the uh, national threat, and uh, for us uh, the regional threat. But different countries uh, hold different views. In some democracy, such as the U.S. and the U.K., when the the, the country that does something wrong, the people also burn their national threats. But they won't be uh, shot for such uh, a crime. But uh, 
China in China we have a totalitarian regime, so things will be uh, viewed differently. Well, when a, a government can uh, crack down on uh, peaceful protesters and also uh, can imprison uh, a lo Nobel laureate, uh, Mr. Lau, and uh, although we have uh, various freedoms under the constitutional constitution, well, they have actually none. The people on the mainland have nothing, and uh, even the right to strike is not allowed. And if you want us to respect such a system, well, it's really the standing things on the end. Well, when we have democracy, when we have uh, one person, one vote in Hong Kong to in the election of the CE, and all the electrical members are returned through universal uh, a system of universal suffrage, and when we are no longer uh, interfered with by mainland officials in the uh, implementation of one country, two systems. Then what, there's no reason why we should show the highest respect to the national and regional flags when every citizen of China uh, can enjoy his or her rights and can choose uh, rep representatives of his own, own will. Unlike the NPC, where there is uh, where the number of uh, candidates uh, equal uh, the number of uh, of seats, and when some people's qualifications are deprived, Doctor Kokake, would you please speak on why you want to support uh, Mister Chen Chi Chin's uh, motion, and why do you sh you want to support his motion, and not refer the matter to an investigation committee? I want. I was trying to explain why we would like to uh, subject Dr. Chiang Hong Tai to the uh, ultimate uh, form of punishment, and that, that is uh, disqualification. And as uh, Mr. Porcher has said, uh, so far we have only done it once uh, in respect of a criminal conviction. So why do on what I want? I want to. Talk about the basis on which we can agree or disagree with uh, Mr. Jia's motion or Mr. Chen Chichin's motion, for that matter. Uh, and I was saying that uh, well, we should uh, be truly uh, persuaded to respect the nation and the national flag. I think no one would disagree that we should do our utmost to improve our governance. As Chinese people, we would not like to see uh, harmless people and peaceful people who are who uh, who have their uh, human rights are violated. So why why do we have to uh, dis discuss something about? The national flag. We are not debate having a debate on the national flag. This debate is about Mr. Chen Chi Chin's motion. All right, so let's talk about why I would support Mr. Chen Chi Chin's motion. Mr. Chen has made it clear that this incident is not uh, something that will warrant the uh, invoking of a forty nine B. Our decision should be a solemn one. If we invoke this in respect of some trivial matter, or you may say that Mr. Porcher is not in, is not uh, really intending to uh, carry out political persecution. Well, we will have to uh, 
observe what Mr. Chair later, because otherwise uh, we can have uh, many the cases to consider. Maybe uh, you are not wearing uh, clothing which is not which are not red enough. Can I move a motion saying that uh, he is not uh, respecting the country, or that he is not? He has not bowed uh, deeply enough when uh, meeting a national leader. Well, this is the so-called the uh, beef knife, the ultimate uh, a position, a very powerful position in the form of uh, 49B. When we want to exercise the power under 49B, we have to uh, ask ourselves whether it's appropriate. It's a question of common sense. Some may think that this is an important matter, but in a Western democracy, a member of the uh, legislature has to be accountable to his constituents. I think in the future, uh, Dr. Zhang's uh, constituents would have to make a decision whether he is qualified or not. A few years later, you may attack him because he's your political opponent. The matter will be left to the voters to decide. But we are not supposed to challenge his uh, status as an elected member here. Otherwise, uh, this uh, council cannot uh, be sustained. We know that uh, the system is already uh, not fair. Half of them are, from, are re returned by FCs, and we allow uh, these members to decide the fate of uh, Dr. Chang. Well, that's disgraceful. That's shame, shame, shameless. We are in no position to decide on the fate of Dr. Chang. Uh, on behalf of his constituents, you may want to uh, ridic ridicule him. You may say that he's not he's, he's done something wrong, uh, like some netizens have uh, done. But we are in a council; we cannot uh, wield the uh, weapon uh, of last resort so lightly. Otherwise. We are not able to discharge our duties, and that's the most important factor why we should support Mr. Chen Chi Chin's motion. Well, what he did might be uh, might not be very sensible, and if you censure him, you will be further. Limiting what a member can do in this council, and that will lead to the endless uh, persecution. When our motherland does not have a democratic system, and when Hong Kong has only got a half based system, and we have half of our members returned by FCs, and still we want to uh, crack down on elected. Members, uh, that's something unacceptable. And if you take other things together, such as the oath-taking incidents, people may come to the uh, conclusion that uh, you would uh, go to any length to disqualify the elected members. So. We cannot support Mr. Paul Chair's motion, and that's why we have no choice but to support Mr. Chen Chi Chin's motion. So I submit. Thank you, Ms. Claudia Mo. I'm hundred percent in support of the motion moved by Ray Chen. That is, we should take no further action on the essential motion moved by Paul Chair. To censure Zheng Chongtai, I support Ray Chen. I don't support Paul Chen for the following reasons. 
my personal perception, my personal thinking, are such that someone thinks that he can overkill, or he can use a machine gun to gun down a hive of bees. I think it is a matter of patriotism. The preachers used to say that. Patriotism is the last refuge of a scoundrel. In 美国 patriotism is the last refuge of the scoundrel. And for the Americans, the duty of the patriotic people is to protect his or her own country from the oppression of a strong power. In other words, when it comes to patriotism, generally speaking, it's got nothing to do with constitution. Our basic law is silent on what is meant by being patriotic. However, for the constitution of the People's Republic of China, there is one reference to patriotism. Please read up Article Twenty Four. It makes it clear that. There is a need to promote patriotism among the people. Now, what appears to me is that someone under one country, two systems would very much like to impress the Beijing authority that he is hugely patriotic, and then for such colleagues, they also want to contrast themselves with others, saying that the others are unpatriotic, so as to.、Um, Show that they are really and very patriotic. This is what it looks like、uh, to me. Now in Hong Kong, we have seen things developing in the same vein. In April,、um, Or rather, in 2014, when the white paper was、uh, issued, we saw the same being repeated. We were talked about blood thicker than water and the great Chinese race. Well, being patriotic. Well, I think it isn't something imposed on us, and I don't think we need always talk about blood thicker than water. And we can't be talking about、um, sharing the same race. In the United States, they can't have the same idea. It is like a salad bowl because someone may have an Irish background, the others from another、uh, country of origin, and you don't rely on brainwashing or constitutional、uh, requirements or、uh, provisions to make sure that people love their country. Now. Of course, you would say that we should no longer be talking about the content of Porteous' motion. But then he started it, and that's why Ray Chen had to move a motion. I support Ray Chen's motion, so I have to go back to the content of the original central motion. So you're illogical. Whenever we stand up to speak, you always ask us to go back to the. Uh, objection raised by Ray Chen. Now I am right on the objection of Ray Chen. Now it is said that Jiang Chongtai violates、uh, Article One Zero Four of the Basic Law, saying that he is unpatriotic. He is wrong. Now、uh, we pledge allegiance. We uphold. The basic law. So by inverting the national flags, then it is it is tantamount to desecrating the flags, etc. Now I'm still talking about the oath itself. Well, it is very odd if you look at the words of the oath itself. Well, Paul Chair isn't really a lawyer, though he should be one. Now I think you are trying to、um, bind our feet and hands, putting us in a straitjacket. 
I think you are starting a very dangerous precedent. If you start to judge someone's words being unpatriotic, while another statement is a violation of the oath, and then somebody else is offending a top national leader. When I was young, I heard about this concerning what happened in the Cultural Revolution. Well, I was told that in our home county, um, someone uh, sent a letter bearing the stem with Chairman Mao, but then he inverted the stem, and then uh, someone reported on him, and he was taken uh, to a street parade. He didn't do it deliberately, so he's even uh, in a worse position. Now, in this case, I'm not sure whether it is deliberate or not, but then if you have listened to N. Jang's uh, speech, uh, it seems that it is a page from the Cultural Revolution literature. Um, now, if you likely resort to accusations that somebody is violating Article 104 in relation to the oath, then it's very dangerous. Just two weeks ago, I asked Mr. Raymond Tam, the uh, Secretary for Constitutional Mainland Affairs, I asked him about interpretation of the basic law as well as the taking of the oath. Then I asked him about our uh, duties and our rights and our obligations. Now, he told us that the interpretation didn't change the legislative intent at all. He went on to say that for members who give a speech here, we have our rights and obligations and privileges untouched. In other words, come June 4th next year, if somebody here talks about the ending of the one-party rule and also vindicating the June 4th, uh, then I asked the secretary to confirm whether this could still be allowed. I asked whether someone we, we could still talk about independence and self determination so rule. He didn't uh rejected it. He was just sitting across the uh, floor. Now Poche is moving the motion. Now for us to talk about ending the one party rule. Um is it tantamount to violating the constitution of the PRC? Well, I think if you read the preamble, it is quite clear that it is all nations will, under the leadership of the Communist Party, um, that is um, with the cooperation of the different parties. In other words, uh, there should be the one-party totalitarian rule. Mr. Tam, the secretary, said that we could still make such remarks. Now, if we allow Paul Chen to have his motion, then in future, others would just repeat the same. And we are really worried. What sort of a legislature are we getting? Of course, there's another school of thought saying that the uh, case isn't totally unfounded. Someone has been blatant and has been uh, willful. I think somebody said that uh, the previous uh, president uh, was too tolerant, and now it is right for us to set the records straight. So I think um, their stance is clear. Now, your mentor, uh, Mr. Jesper Chung, was our previous president, and for him to hear such things being said, I think he will be rendered into tears. Article 48, paragraph 2 of the Basic Law has made it clear that the CD is responsible for the implementation of the Basic Law. In other words, if anybody is violating the Basic Law, the CE can take that person to court. Now, you may say that it hasn't been the case all the time, but surely Edward Leung and Yao Weijing was taken, were taken to court based on this paragraph. 
Now, whether you are a professor, a program host, or I think technically speaking, someone can be taken to court for suspected violation of basic law. You may say that I'm exaggerating. I have shared the same thought before. Now, for the JR against Leung and Yao, and for them to be disqualified means that this is a possibility. Of course, they're now taking the case to the Court of Final Appeal. For us in the LegCo, we shouldn't tolerate this. What do you want to say? Ms. Claudia Mel, please tell me what, in what way has this to do with whether you want to support Ray Chen or not? Let me say this again. I support Ray Chen. I'm against Paul Che because I think the whole thing is about patriotism. Someone would very much like to impress Beijing how patriotic he is. And in order to achieve this, he would like to tell others that somebody else is unpatriotic so as to bring out the contrast. So all the time I've been talking about the main theme of patriotism for Chang's uh, act. Maybe not everybody would agree with him, and I'm not too sure about the message that he's trying to bring out, but it is a fact that um, he has allowed others to get an excuse to uh, do this against him. But still, I think we are talking about an elected member. Now you're saying that this elected member should be uh, relieved of his duty, so you are the enemy of the people. We now have to debate on Mr. Raymond Chen's motion to oppose Mr. Jose's motion under ROP 49B1A to censure. Mr. Chang Chong Tai. Many members refer to the investigation into Mr. Kam Nai Wai's incident. I was involved in the investigation. We did discuss whether we should look into uh, the accusation by uh, his uh, female assistant that she was sacked after she rejected his advances to her. We discussed uh, whether we should set up a investigation committee under ROP 49B2A. Different members re reacted differently to Mr. Kam Wai's incident. Many uh, ladies uh, wrote to the council to lodge a complaint against uh, Mr. Kam. Whether we should set up an investigation committee, well, we should adopt a very stringent standard. Judging from our experience in Mr. Kemp's case, I believe it's quite likely that a committee will be set up. Once uh, Mr. Raymond Chen's uh, motion is uh, voted down, then an investigation committee will be set up. The motion will be referred to the Investigation Committee. I supported an investigation into Mr. Kemp's conduct. However, there was none from the opposition camp in the committee. That means all members in the committee were from the pro-establishment camp. I don't want to go into the details, but members who were um, party to the committee adopted a very stringent standard. Although we were from different political parties, we were of the view that we should not uh, easily let go of our very high standards. We had a long debate. Now, the committee was made up of pro-establishment members because no one from the pan-democratic camp uh, uh, decided to join. Although the um, evidence given by Mr. Cam was at times uh, inconsistent, but we adopted a very high standard and we came to the conclusion that 
we could not confirm that Mr. Kemp dismissed his female assistant because he had rejected his advances. And then we also have uh, Article uh, 796 of the Basic Law, and that is a, the motion has to be agreed by two thirds ma majority of this council. Indeed, it is a very, very high standard. Dr. Kwakaki and uh, Ms. Claudia Mo said that they had to mention the cause of uh, the motion. Yes, I agree. There is no way we can. We can as easily um, dismiss the cause. Now, because of for, for ROP 49B1A, it is a very serious matter. Now, we discuss here respect for the national flag. Legislators have received many, many complaints from members of the public in relation to Mr. Jiang's conduct. He turned the national flags upside down. There were strong calls from the community to ask us to attach significance to this matter. So is it really uh, just a childish issue, a childish behavior on the part of Mr. Jiang? Mr. Leung Chong Hang and Ms. Yang Wai Ching used the term China, China, to refer to China. Perhaps they really felt that there was nothing wrong with the term. It's just like what Mr. Kam Nai Wai did. He didn't realize that there would be strong reaction from the uh, women community. Well, if we look at CFA's ruling, the judgment compared the different standards adopted by different countries in relation to the attitude to the national flag. Some were stricter, some were more lenient. How come for the PRC uh, was so serious? Because our country were was uh, split and uh, we were bullied, and then it was not easy to achieve territorial integrity. So country, I mean, China has gone through many sufferings. So the sovereign state treasures the national flag. With the reunification with our motherland, well, Annex 3 has been a very uh, constrained. The country only asked for a very minor thing, and that is the national flag must fly in Hong Kong because that represents sovereignty. Because Hong Kong, in Hong Kong, the national flag was never flown in Hong Kong before 1997. So for to all Chinese, even those who do not live on the mainland, have very strong feelings about the national flag. Miss Claudia Mo uh, may say that it's not a big deal, and Dr. Kwakake may say that you must set up a democratic system before I can respect the national flag. You are entitled to your views, but to many people, the national flag carries an important uh, meaning. It symbolizes the uh, peace and unity we have in our country. And Annex 3 is here. We have the National Flag Ordinance. Uh, it may directly apply to Hong Kong or we can legislate uh, on our own. We, therefore, we've got the National Flag, the National Emblem Ordinance and the Regional Flag and Regional Flag Amber, uh, Emblem Ordinance. Section 7 says that we must uh, protect our national flag and national emblem. Some legislators say that, well, you can wait for criminal prosecution. In the past, ROP 49B1A uh, has been invoked but not passed. Yes, we are using a very high standard, but we would like to set rules and boundary in this council. Many new legislators might have seen too many such scenes on the TV, and they take these things lightly. 
Even though they have said uh, such, a, they've made such insulting remarks to the Chinese, they don't think that it's a big deal. It's not just my own saying it. Even overseas Chinese resented that such remarks, and many people, including Mr. Cheng Chong Tai, may be amazed uh, to see the strong reaction. It's not just in this council. We've also received many. Uh, Comments. Mr. Zhang once studied on the mainland. I'm sure he understands that the national flag does just doesn't doesn't just represent the uh, ruling party, but also final unification of the country. The national flag carries a very deep meaning. It symbolizes that we will no longer be bullied. By other forces, and because of this, I cannot support Mr. Chang Chi Chun's motion. But I can predict this: if Mr. Chang Chi Chun's motion is passed, and if an investigation committee is to be set up, I expect members from both camps should join, and we should all adopt a very high standard. And then uh, in that committee, you can uh, use your arguments as to whether they are not they they were not the real national flags or they were just copies. Or, well, I had experience in working in such a committee, so I'd like to share with you my views. And I want to explain to you why some people find this behavior of turning the national flags upside down so unacceptable. If we set up an investigation committee, then uh, we are telling the public that we take such things very seriously. We have addressed the concerns of the community, and it's not that LegCo will not follow up. We will follow up in that committee. We will uh, publish a report, and whether we can um, carry Article seventeen nine seven, well, we must adopt a very stringent. Standard. With these remarks, I oppose Mr. Raymond Chen's motion. I would like to remind members, according to Rule Twenty-Three, Bracket Capital A, uh, Seventy-Three, Bracket A, the, there will be seven members in an investigation committee, not five. Mr. Leung Chi Chao, this debate is about uh, Mr. Chen Chi Chin's motion. And uh, he has invoked uh, Rule Forty Nine B, bracket uh, two capital A, th 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 that no further action should be taken on the motion moved by Mr. Chair Wai Porcher. And Mr. Porcher has moved a motion of to censure Doctor Jiang Chong Tai under Rule Forty Nine B, bracket capital one A. It's a serious matter, uh, and it's only it's uh, not really sensible. Not it's su superfluous to say that we should return to matters of livelihood. It shows disrespect to members of this council. Mr. Porcher's motion is about. The behavior of Dr. Chiang Chong Tai on the 19th of October with a motion of censure, and I won't go into the uh, contents of Mr. Chair's motion. It's about uh, behavior in this council. We are protected by two ordinances. First, Article 77. Of the basic law, members of LegCo uh, shall be immune from legal action in respect of their statements at meetings of the council. And Article seventy-eight states that members of LegCo shall not be subjected to arrest when attending or on their way to a meeting of the council. So some immunities are offered to LegCo members, but these two do not apply to. Uh, the behavior of Dr. Jiang Chong Tai. 
And if Mr. Chen Chi Chin is of the view that uh, we should not discuss the matter, let's uh, use our time on livelihood uh, issues. In the past, Mr. Chen Chi Chin did everything he could against uh, livelihood uh, issues. For example, the uh, medical registration uh, medical re registration bill was uh, subject to Philip Bustering and it fell food. And now you appear to be so righteous and ask us to discuss the uh, livelihood issues. I just uh, can't react. And you are adopting different uh, standards at different times. And it's also claimed that uh, Mr. Porter's motion is political persecution. Mr. Jai has made it very clear that Dr. Chang's uh, behavior uh, breaks the law. Why do we have to set up an investigation committee? Because we want to know whether Dr. Chang uh, does not uh, support or uphold the basic law or the or bears allegiance to Hong Kong SAR. This is not the political persecution because the oath that he made uh, is a matter under the Article 104. So if you say this is uh, a political struggle and not uh, about the law, I would say it's just an excuse to, to protect the wrongdoer. And even more outraging is that uh, it's said that uh, on the 19th of October, the national threat and uh, regional threat we put up here Uh, were subjected to uh, the f some uh, further the observation, and that uh, the facts uh, were turned into rubbish uh, once we walked out. I think uh, Mr. Chen should familiarize himself with uh, our rules. Everything displayed here belongs to the member concern and it's, they should not be uh, damaged or taken away otherwise it's an act of uh, damage. Is Mr. Chen Chi Chin is a real that once he is outside the chamber everything on his desk uh, will be uh, rubbish and then in that case uh, we could have uh, thrown everything on his desk away. before the president can make a ruling. So he's trying to uh, stay away from or circumvent the rules that we have been adopting for our meetings. So on the one hand, Mr. Chen Chi-shin wants to protect the, wrong, the wrongdoing. On the other, he manifests uh, a very uh, insincere attitude. And we have the uh, national threat and national anthem ordinance and also in the basic law uh, there are clear provisions on the, the national law and national anthem emblem ordinance that there's no desecration is allowed. Uh, Dr. Mr. Chen Chi Chin, uh, sorry, it's Dr. Koka K. Uh, he says Americans can do and whatever they like uh, to their threat. It's about freedom of uh, speech, but there's no American law saying that burning the threat is against the law. But we have the ordinance, uh, and it's uh, an offense to desecrate uh, or burn the national threat. 
it happened in this council. Many the viewers uh, witnessed what happened. It, the action carries far-reaching implications. Why did the member did what he did? There must be a purpose. So this um, debate serves meaningful purposes. And uh, if an Im investigation committee is set up, Dr. Chang will be given a chance to explain what was in his mind. Why is it that Mr. Chen Chi Chen wants to deny Dr. Chang this chance to explain himself? Uh, is it because he's concerned that Dr. Chang would say that uh, he did it deliberately to insult the national flag, uh, the regional flag, and the Hong Kong SAR government? With regard to the motion moved by Mr. Chen Chi Chin under 49B bracket 2A, I think the purpose is to try to excuse uh, Dr. Chen Chong Tai. This is not something we want to see. So I and other members will support Dr. Uh, Mr. Po Chen's motion, and we will uh, we are against uh, Dr. Mr. Chen Chi Chin's motion. So I submit. Mr. Andrew Wen. Madam Deputy, I speak in support of Ray Chen's motion. Before I speak, there are a few points that I need to say to clarify the position. All the more so when I've heard the pro-establishment camp members don't try to label us unnecessarily. I'm a Chinese, I was born here, and I was brought up here. And I hope members can clarify and understand clearly the focus of today's uh, debate, and please apply the same yardstick. Madam Deputy, I support Ray Chen's motion for three reasons. Let me quote to talk about the following. First of all, we must attach importance to due process. We should be allowed to take care of our own affairs, and certainly the procedures and the motion um, should not be preempted. For Rule 49B1A or 1, it is clear if a member has been convicted of a criminal offence and sentence for more than one month's imprisonment, then the um, disqualification allows um, applies for 49B bracket one capital A. Um, the wording is vague, vague, and we are not given the details. Say, for example, it refers to misbehaviour and breach of oath, but then the definition is very general. Of course, we have a lot of powers. But I don't think we should lightly resort to such a mechanism. If we want to set up an investigation committee, it should be something for um, overall and important public interest, rather than the personal conduct of a member or trying to restrict members' acts and words. We shouldn't be uh, going to Rule 49B bracket 1A immediately. Otherwise, this will become a political trial court, and it is not right. On the other hand, uh, if there is a complaint, whether criminal or civil, we do have courts and other relevant statutory bodies to adjudicate the case. If the outcome is such that we have to follow this up, and then we need to apply 49B1 or 49 B one A, then we proceed forthwith instead of jumping the queue and going to forty nine B and set up the investigation committee. Otherwise it will be a case of abuse of process. Moreover, if we start this precedent, then it is not just about an individual member. Instead, by having such a mechanism, there will be no end to it. Who said this? I quoted from what Mr. Porcher said when he spoke against Miriam Lau's motion to invoke 49B1 to set up 
an investigation committee against Gam Lai Wai, I was shocked because what he said uh, applies totally in this case. So Paul Jie doesn't practice what he advocated in the past. I support uh, Ray Chen for the reasons that I've outlined. In this way, it means that um, we won't be having endless uh, disputes. Just now, a colleague has said that it is like using a machine gun to shoot at a bee. I think it is like wielding the um, ultra superior sword to cut a grain of sesame. I think people can judge this case in relation to the uh, national flag and national emblem ordinance. Um, their specifications about the manufacturing of the flags and emblems. If you don't follow the specifications, you may be prosecuted by the DFJ. And then for the national flags and emblems, the specifications, dimensions and color, there are specifications. Like the ratio is 3 to 2 and there are5 specifications only. The smallest is 96 cm in length and 64 cm in height. Largest 288 cm in length and 192 cm in height. So it is quite clear that what we saw the other day, they looked like national flags but they weren't. Uh, for those who are in support of Porsche, then you would cite uh, Section 8, copies of national flags or national emblem, so that people are led to believe that they are. But it is not up to us to say that whether they are. And in fact, you can see that this is being served contradictory. If you admit that it is um, a national flag, then it means that somebody has breached the specifications in the ordinance. If we want to apply that yardstick, we should apply it thoroughly. And then we should uh, query um, the other members involved and those who showed or displayed the national flags should also be um, alleged with the offense of misbehavior. Now, Edward Lau said that we were uh, mixing up what is right and what is wrong. If you seriously think that what you displayed were national flags, then you broke the law yourself. Then you didn't show it in a solemn manner because it's just like flying it a half mass. The dimensions were wrong, the color was wrong, the way it was displayed was wrong. So if you apply the same yardstick, if you want to accuse um, Zhang Chongtai, you need to do some soul searching. Are you really showing full respect towards the national flag? And I want to challenge you. To me, it is only a prop, but you say that it is something serious, it is solemn, it is a national flag. Where is it? Can you show it to us? Please ask yourselves. Um, I don't know how many of you who showed this uh, national flag, so-called national flag with the wrong dimension, that you have uh, treasured it and you have put it on a desk in your office, uh, in your car, or you treasure it so much that you carry it with you. I'm afraid that from what we have seen in previous public uh, marches and demonstrations, we used to see the same sort of so-called national flags being dumped uh, anywhere. And they were just left anywhere, like next to the gutter or in a rubbish bin. So you still want to say that they are really national flags? Please show me whether you have put it up properly in your office. So it is laughable. I support Ray Chen, and for the reason I've just outlined, for Paul Chase, I'm thinking today, it is uh, not surprising to see that he um, has a different view from what he said in the past because it's a matter of judgment. But we need to follow the same logic. If it is um, justifiable to go after Chen Chongtai, I'm afraid there will be no end to it. Because in this way, come next week or the week after next, the president would have to deal with a similar uh, matter because somebody would hold the members accountable for showing disrespect to the national flags. Just now, a member has said that other countries had different views about the national flags. It is said that um, the uh, PRC would take the national flag very seriously. I think no country would be uh, adopting a light-hearted manner. It is, some, it is a matter of the degree. 
but I'm afraid in this case it is a matter of applying the yardstick to different uh, extent um, depending on the person that you're dealing with. Now we talk about the national flag, sovereignty, etc. Well, from what I have seen um, for the pandemocrats, I think the way that you say you respect the national flag, sovereignty, emblem, etc. Well, we haven't pledged any allegiance to any foreign uh, country, foreign government, but some of you uh, have done so. So I don't think you are right to do this. Um, when you can swear allegiance to a foreign government, how can you say that you pledge full uh, allegiance to the PRC and you have full respect um, towards the national flag? But then the national flags that you displayed were of the wrong dimensions, and it's more like uh, flying the flags at half mass. So you are not showing respect at all. And today, and Jiang has also said that. Uh, maybe uh, Chang Chung Tai should be challenged to invert um, the plaque showing his uh, ancestor's name. I don't think the comparison is right. The communists don't uh, worship any god, so for you to make such a comparison, I don't know whether it is causing more embarrassment than praise. Uh, to me, when I conclude, I say that I support Ray Chen. The motion before us is totally unnecessary. Once we start this precedent, there won't be an end to it, and we have to deal with similar incidents all the time. Thank you. Mr. Holden Chow. President, before I... Started, I saw my colleague, Mr. Lau Kofan, showing the national flags and the uh, regional flags. He has uh, kept them, treasured them. So, with every respect for the national flag and regional flag, we will not uh, treat them in a way. Mr. Chang Chong Tai did. Regarding Mr. Ray Chen's motion, I think uh, he is just trying to condone the behavior of Mr. Zhang Chong Tai. I listened to Mr. Ray Chen very carefully. He said that we shouldn't take any action. We should treat as if nothing. We should act as if nothing has happened. This is ridiculous. I slap you in the face and I say, uh, let's uh, act as if nothing had happened. Could it be? He said that the behavior of Mr. Cheng Chong Tai perhaps uh, was to consult people or owners of uh, the flags instead of uh, insulting the flags. This is just as ridiculous. What if I slap you on your face? And I said that through slapping you on your face, I just want to insult your father. And you should not take full of action. Does this argument hold water? Well, I have also listened to the speeches of members. I think they are thief crying thief, and therefore they ask people not to investigate. You ask a thief, should a policeman catch thieves? Of course, he will say no. It's just as simple as that. If this council continues to connive improper behavior, we will continue to decline, and we will not really return to the right track if we follow Mr. Ray Chen's approach. We must enforce our rules and regulations here. Properly, you have to tell the next generation that the dignity of uh, the country is just as important. To share with you my personal experience, when I was uh, 
a university student. One summer vacation, I went to the U.S. and worked in a pleasure ground for a summer job. I was on an exchange program. And then I was impressed. At 9 a.m. every morning, the um, theme park would uh, fly the uh, national flag and people would stand solemnly. This is a respect. We must at least uh, show basic respect to other countries, to our own country. We must not show any contempt. I also listened to Dr. Kwakaki's remarks. He said, "Then why do we have to use a censuring a censure motion to disqualify Mr. Cheng Chong Tai?" Dr. Kwok may think that this is a trivial matter. Perhaps it's because he has never got an ounce of respect for the country. The essence of the basic law is one country, two systems. He has never respected the country. How will we have any respect for the two countries? How can we say that he sincerely uphold the basic law? In fact, in our oath, you are required to uphold the basic law and pledge allegiance to the SAR of the PRC. Was he lying as well when he took that oath? Anyone who support Mr. Ray Chen's motion not to take any action can be seen to have no respect for the dignity of the country. Mr. Porter's motion asked for an investigation and perhaps even uh, later to disqualify Mr. Chang Chong Tai is a very useful mirror. It will show us who are the bad guys, who are the monsters. I reiterate here that this council must enforce our rules. We must not continue to connive or to condone such behavior. Thank you. Mr. Alpha Young, President, I totally agree with the very emotional speech made by Mr. Houghton Chow. We should not condone the, the wrongdoer. And I'm talking about CY Leung. In respect of UGL, what has the DAB adopted as its position? Why has the DAB has a veto all the motions to follow up on the uh, UGL uh, uh, incident? So I return the remarks to them. What is uh, condoling a wrongdoing? What is uh, enforcing the right rules? How can we educate the next generation? For everyone who has listened to the DAB members, especially Mr. Holden Chow, well, would come to uh, some other uh, realization uh, when they uh, look in this, they look into the uh, deeper meaning of Mr. Holden Chow. Well, let's go. Procedure should not be invoked lightly. It must be uh, some about something uh, serious matters, but not a personal uh, con behavior. And then uh, we, we should not just uh, invoke uh, Rule 49B. That would mean uh, this council is turned into a court, which will be uh, used to uh, judge members. And also, if we likely invoke a 49B bracket 1A, it's an abuse of process. And also, if we create this precedent, then I must say we are, it's not a question of whether a particular member will be targeted. But since we have introduced uh, this uh, arrangement, there will be no end to the matter. And who's who's the wise guy who has said uh, such wise remarks? Well, this motion is moved by Mr. Chen Chin. But uh, who? What's the motion about? It's about uh, Mr. Porche's motion. 
Well, I never know. That is a big problem if you go back on your previous remarks. First, if you stand for the right thing. But I don't know what uh, went through Mr. Porche's mind. He hasn't told us. But I just want to say that, that the wise remarks came from Mr. Paul Chair in 2009 when he opposed to the motion of censure. Seven years, just seven years has passed. And now today uphold the banner of uh, morality. Mr. Chair wants to target uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Cheng Chong Tai. I'm no a uh, fan of uh, conspiracy theory, but uh, under the rule of CY Learn for four years, as someone, as a Hong Konger, who uh, can uh, analyze things, it's difficult not to uh, look at things from a conspiracy point of view. After the electrical uh, elections, uh, when the uh, pandemic uh, the uh, pandemocratic camp uh, got uh, 30 seats, and maybe some of the uh, uh, people who cannot uh, explain things to their bosses, they would like to create uh, some uh, conditions so that they will continue to be given seats. And as a, as a result, uh, some members have been disqualified. Whether this uh, conspiracy that will succeed uh, will ultimately depend on uh, whether our people are wise enough to see through them. But uh, Mr. let's look at the objective fact of Mr. Paul Chair. Well, it's simple that uh, that you will be targeted against if you do not uh, you are not obedient. Obedient. This is unprecedented that we want to invoke uh, Rule 49B based on uh, trivial and, uh, and, and some action of, of a prankster. And, uh, that, and you want to form uh, use this as a basis to disqualify a member. This goes against our past practice and conventions. As I've said this time, it was a motion moved by nobody other than Mr. Paul Chair. I think Mr. Ch Chair uh, knows that uh, even if uh, Mr. Chen Chi Chin's motion is defeated and an investigation committee is formed, will the conclusions made by the uh, committee be endorsed by this council, or would uh, uh, Dr. Chen Chong Tai be ultimately censured? Well, I think Mr. Paul Chen knows the answer very well. So I would say that this is a, a matter of political calculation. He's just doing something political. I know that it's not very efficient to turn this council into a court. And if very likely we use this council to target uh, your political opponent. That's not going to do this council any good. I think, uh, well, I ask, I would like to ask, what can we find out by passing Mr. Paul Chair's motion, by setting an investigation committee? Are we going to open a front gate? Are we going to uh, to cause the distrust among members. Actually, there was some discussion in the past about Rule 49B and also what's meant by misbehavior. There must be some criteria to indicate what behavior should be misbehavior and what kind of misbehavior would meet the threshold in Article 7479. Seven, but there's no need to do so, because there are other provisions in the basic law, Article 79, bracket six, 
when he or she is convicted and sentenced to imprisonment for one month or more for a criminal offence committed within or outside the region. That's the threshold. That's the objective threshold. Anything below that should be a minor criminal offence. And we can we should only consider a criminal offence with such a severity. That should be our rule. If we use this ruler to measure the behaviour of Dr. Chang, would you support that motion? First of all, uh, Dr. Chang inverted the national threat. That's the behaviour of uh, primary students. I, I I beg to differ. I do not agree with. To what he did, but objectively, uh, objectively, objectively assess is that something that would uh, warrant the conviction to be uh, attracting one month's imprisonment? Some have said that the the action would uh, violate the national flag and national anthem uh, ordinance. And what does the uh, ordinance say? A person who desecrates the national flag by uh, burning, mutilating, squatting on, defiling, and trampling of it or net uh, commits an no offence. Inverting the threat would inverting the threat uh, be uh, counted. Uh, then I think uh, you 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 don't need to be a very well educated person to know that it is not the case. Actually. In respect of disqualifying a member, this council were well, well, different uh, members from different parties have exercised uh, the, uh, a lot of judge, uh, judgment and has been wise enough. In uh, April 2012, uh, there was a debate on whether Mrs. Leung, Chen, Leung, uh, Leung should be disqualified because of a criminal conviction. And I quote, well, disqualifying a member is a serious matter, and you are trying to uh, to overturn the decision made by the voters. It must be carefully considered. I do not agree with the uh, behavior, but I don't think the severity is uh, is severe enough to warrant disqualification. Who said that, Mr. Chan Kim Po? When we proceed to the vote today. Would Mr. Chan be uh, repeating the such wise remark and wise counsel, President? Unless the court has convicted a member, otherwise, should we invoke our internal rules to target a particular member? This is a matter that we need to exercise uh, prudence. We should not just have a few members standing up and then we establish an investigation committee. Well, some members are used to used to be very prudent, and and now they want to target a member. I think uh, they are just trying to the, this make the supporters of that particular member disheartened. Maybe uh, I can say this. Uh, maybe the sun doesn't rise uh, in the from the east. Mr. Lang Yuchong, Mr. Ray Chen, I ask for a quorum call.
梁耀忠议员。Mr. 梁耀忠。Mr. President, I support Mr. Ray Chen's motion, that is, in relation to the essential motion moved by Paul Chair.